Do you remember the glory days of DOS gaming? And do you want to relive those magic memories on real hardware? If so, I've got something for you. This is the ITX Llama. It's a brand new PC purpose built for playing old DOS games with no compromises. It's tiny, it's silent, and best of all, it's built to maximize compatibility with DOS and early Windows 98 games. I won't keep a secret, I really love this hardware, and I think you'll love it too. Let's learn some more. If you want to play DOS games on modern hardware, the main compatibility challenge is sound. Back in the 90s, DOS sound cards always plugged into the ISA bus, and modern PCs just don't have that anymore. When a DOS game starts up, it looks for a sound card on the ISA bus, and it won't find one, leaving us stranded without sound. The ITX Llama solves this issue with this Vortex 86 system on module. Hidden inside this module is the ability to expose the ISA bus via GPIO pins. And with the help of a custom BIOS on the motherboard, the ITX Llama does just that. It wires the Vortex pins up to a Crystal CS4237B, which is essentially an ISA Sound Blaster card on a chip, complete with FM synth, Sound Blaster audio, and MIDI. In theory, this should give us perfect compatibility and authentic sound for DOS games. On the CPU side, the Vortex 86 includes a full 486SX instruction set, along with an FPU and other extensions that make it broadly similar to a Pentium Pro. The CPU can be clocked anywhere from 100 to 500 megahertz, which should give us plenty of power for DOS and even some Windows 98 games. For graphics, the board has an AGP slot, and for storage, microSD. The microSD card is mounted as a hard disk, and there's even a hard disk clicker to mimic the sound of an old spinning drive. This board packs a ton of other features. Taking a quick tour, we have analog line-in, line-out, and microphone, Toslink, digital audio, a game port, a serial port, an Ethernet port, and two USB 2.0 ports. For keyboard and mouse, we have two options. We can either connect a PS2 keyboard and mouse, or we can connect a modern USB keyboard and mouse to these white USB ports, and these special ports use an RP2040 chip to convert the USB keyboard protocol to PS2. On the board itself, we have a SATA connector for extra speedy storage, a PC speaker, a battery socket for real-time clock, and three fan headers for extra cooling. Last but not least, we have some expansion headers, including a port for connecting an external OPL3 module, a wavetable connector for Wave Blaster expansion cards, a 40-pin connector for attaching a Raspberry Pi, which we can use for MIDI emulation, and lastly, a serial-to-Wi-Fi modem, so we can get an authentic dial-up experience. We'll explore these later, but first, let's get the board built and powered up. The system on module has two rows of 32 pins on the back. We line them up with the board and then gently push to secure it. Next, it's time for the graphics card. I bought this new old stock Radeon 9200 SE. It's massive overkill for a system like this, but it was too cheap to resist, and most importantly, it keeps my build brand new. So in that goes. Last but not least, it's ATX power. The board works with a regular PC power supply, and the module doesn't draw too much power, so you might get away with a Pico PSU. On it goes. Before we power up, it's time to take a look at the jumpers, and the most important bank is this bank, from J7 to J16. If we pull the jumpers to the left, like it is now, the board is configured for PS2 keyboard and mouse, 
And if we pull the jumpers to the right, the board will activate the RP2040 chip for USB keyboard and mouse. With the system built, we need to install the custom BIOS. Most importantly, this configures the pinout on the Vortex 86, so it can talk to the ISA bus, the Crystal Sound chip, the micro SD slot, and the other devices on this board. To flash the module, I've prepared this bootable USB stick with the custom BIOS and a BIOS update utility. So in that goes, and let's power it up. We can flash the BIOS from the command line. This is the incantation, and go. With the flash complete, let's restart and hopefully take a look at the custom BIOS. Okay, we're in the BIOS. Taking a look through, we have the CPU menu where we can change the CPU speed and disable caches. We have disk settings where we can change the boot priority. We have COM settings where we can change the serial port speed. We have audio settings where we can configure the sound blaster and MIDI ports. Ethernet settings where we can configure the MAC address. Fan control where we can change the fan speed if we have them. And lastly, the ability to control LEDs, the hard drive clicker, and select a boot jingle. With the BIOS in place, it's time to prepare the micro SD card with an operating system. We're actually going to do this using the ITX Llama's virtual floppy drive. So in the micro SD card goes, click and power on. When we boot the Llama, we can press escape for the boot menu and then two to boot from an integrated Windows 98 startup disk. The Windows 98 image was flashed to the system or module with our custom BIOS. And I think it's a great choice for this machine because it's period appropriate. It supports large FAT32 drives and also it's real DOS. So it'll have great compatibility for our DOS games. Now we're booted, we need to prepare the micro SD card with FDisk. Create partition, create primary partition. Okay, with that done, it's time for the moment of truth. Does it boot? Drum roll, please. Okay, we're in. DOS is booted, but we're not done yet. This disk is empty and we need games. And this is where I want to try another key feature of the Llama. I've prepared another USB stick. This is FAT formatted and it's loaded up with Doom, Duke Nukem and some other things. I'm going to insert this and reboot. In the BIOS, I'm going to set USB as fixed disks to enabled. If I do this, it should mount our USB drive as drive D. Let's take a look. Okay, it works. Since this is done through the BIOS, it doesn't need any drivers. It just works. So now we have the games, we're ready for the glory. So, CD games, DOS, Doom. Now the Crystal Audio chip is configured by the BIOS, so audio should just work. If I run Unisound, we have the Sound Blaster at port 220, IRQ7 and DMA1. The FM synth is on port 388, and the MIDI is on port 330. This is looking good, so we're ready for the Doom test.
So the sound works great, but what about the performance? How fast is this thing? Taking a look at Sysinfo, we have 838 CPU marks. This puts us way ahead of a Pentium 66 and more than 10 times faster than a 486 DX33. Not too bad. A Doom benchmark at high detail gives us 43 frames per second and Quake gives us 31. Pretty good. So we've got performance at the high end, but what about at the low end? DOS games like Wing Commander are super speed sensitive. If we run on anything faster than a 386, it's unplayably fast. Take a look. We can use the Lumber BIOS to turn down the CPU speed and turn off the caches. With this done, we're closer to a 386 in terms of performance. And Wing Commander, well, it runs great. Take a look. Now, earlier on, I did promise that we would look at these expansion connectors, and we'll start with this one, the OPL3 connector. Instead of relying on the built-in Crystal FM synth, we can add a real Yamaha OPL chip via an add-on board like this one. Why is this important? Well, the OPL chips were the exact same chips used in the original AdLib and Sound Blaster cards, and this add-on board actually has an OPL3 chip which appeared in the Sound Blaster 16 and the Sound Blaster Pro 2. So if you use one of these, we should get a super authentic DOS sound experience. The installation is super easy. We just connect here and then power on the Llama. In the BIOS, we can scroll to the audio section and select external FM synth to enabled. When we boot, now we can see FM synthesizer OPL3 module, which means that the module is activated. We'll use Duke Nukem 3D for a quick compare. Take a listen. For me, the Crystal Audio is good, but the OPL3 has those authentic Sound Blaster sounds. It's perfect. If we really want to level up our audio, we want Wavetable. This 26-pin connector up here allows us to add a Wavetable or Wave Blaster daughter board, and luckily I have one in the form of this Dream Blaster X2GS. These boards enable sample-based general MIDI music and it's a big step up from the traditional FM synth. So let's install this. Power on. And then in our game options, we'll change from Sound Blaster to General MIDI or Sound Canvas. Are you ready?
It sounds awesome. As an aside, a lot of DOS audio tracks were composed for the Roland Sound Canvas, so this is often the most authentic way to play. So it's no surprise that we have percussion perfection here. Okay, anything else to try? Well, we do have this hard drive clicker. As I mentioned before, we can enable it by putting a jumper across pins J6. So let's do that. Power up. We have the clicks. Okay, so a summary. Well, first, I love this thing. It's small, it's silent, it's ultra authentic for retro games, and it's also brand new. It targets that sweet spot of mid to late DOS games, and these are my absolute faves. It's also got all the fancy add-ons that I wish I had back in the day, and it's all in one package. Second, a huge thanks. The genius behind this board is Ivan Bola. Thanks Ivan for putting this project together and shipping it. And last, I'm not done. There are still some things I want to try on this board. I want to get a fan and bring the CPU up to 500 megahertz. I want to try out Windows 98 and play some more advanced games. I want to try out the last expansion header where I could add a Raspberry Pi for Roland MT32 support. I want to try another GPU, perhaps a Voodoo card with Glide support. And last but not least, I want to use this SATA port for a CD drive or maybe a speedy SSD. So plenty more fun to have, but for today, I'll leave it there. As you can probably tell, I really enjoyed this throwback treasure. What are your thoughts? Does modern retro hardware like this appeal? Or do you prefer DOSBox? As always, comments and questions down below. Enjoy.